31, welcome to example three. So this time we have the function f of x being two to the x minus one. So this is pretty similar to the example two function. I'm just gonna write the example two function right up here so we can recall it. We had two to the x in example two and we have two to the x minus one in example one, I mean in example three. So what does this x minus one do? Is this gonna shift us down one unit or is it going to shift us right one unit? Which way are we gonna go with this? Now, we have to think about this x minus one has its own little binomial, or it is a binomial, and it has its own little parentheses around it. And so whenever you're subtracting inside the grouping symbols, it's gonna go left, right. And if you remember, this is counterintuitive. So even though you see the minus one here, it's actually gonna shift you right one unit. So I wanna show you two ways to graph this, all right? We'll show you the direct way on your calculator second. I wanna take what I did on my calculator for example two and play it out for example three. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is how you can always handle transformations. So if you remember from that last example, right? Example two, we had two to the x in there. Let me go to my table. So I wanna take, let's say I wanna take this point here, zero, one. If I was at zero, one, all right, for my two to the x function, and now I would like to graph two to the x minus one, I will shift it right one unit, okay? If I had the ordered pair one, two, so here was one, two, I wanna shift it right one unit. If I had the ordered pair two, four, I wanna shift it right one unit. And if I had the ordered pair three, eight, let me go to three and then we go four, five, six, seven, eight, I wanna shift it right one unit. And I can do that for these numbers as well. Instead of negative 3.125, I'll do negative 2.125. And instead of negative 2.25, I'll go negative 1.25. And instead of negative 1, 1 half, I'll go 0, 1 half. So I could sit there and take all of the ordered pairs from 2 to the x and just add 1 to the x coordinates because I'm shifting it right one unit. So that's totally viable. If you don't like that, you can always go through, put parentheses around that binomial that's up in the power, and then go to your table here and you'll see all of those um, ordered pairs play out. So let me go ahead, graph this, all right. I'm gonna sketch the horizontal asymptote into here. And it, a horizontal asymptote or any asymptote, they're dotted lines because they're not technically part of the graph. They're just these boundaries that we have. So we had a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. Okay, so let's go through and pick out the traits. So for this function, I had no fractions, no radicals, no logarithms, my domain, all real numbers. All right, my range. Well, I have the graph so I can do this. I can see that I'm going up forever. I don't have a down forever, which is fine. I can see that my lowest values start here. This is the lowest point at y equaling zero. I never actually crossed that horizontal asymptote, so I'll put a parenthesis there. If I look at my end behavior, it looks like I have my horizontal asymptote of y equaling zero on the left, and then I have my right arrow up, all right? so. That's all there is to that one. It's your basic exponential growth. It's been shifted one unit right from the equation we saw in example two, and that's what we got. Okay, so with that, we're gonna continue to shift and stretch these things. I'll see you in a bit, bye.